So you're welcome. We are gathered here this morning for the funeral mass of Bridget Bridie Brennan from St Mary's Park. The memories Bridie has left behind for her loved ones now can't ever fade, Rem remembering who she was and her life. So let us take a few moments to recall our memories of Bridie now, remembering her and her life in her funeral mass. And as we remember Bridie now, I invite Chris, Margaret, Eleanor, Bridie and Sheila to go to the back of the church, please, to bring symbols forward now representing Bridie's life. <clears throat> so the symbols that will be brought forward is a papal blessing that Bridie uh, received at, as a wedding present, um, representing her faith and her love for God. A medal is brought up that Bridie received from the President when she reached uh, 101 years of age just last Monday. And prayer books and rosary beads of Bridie sh show her dedication to her prayer life and to the sacraments of the church. And a picture of Saint Therese is also brought up, Bridie's favourite saint whom she had great devotion and prayed to often. Okay, so we begin off by blessing ourselves in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ in communion with the Holy Spirit be with you all. So again, you're welcome for uh, Bridie's funeral mass. So welcome Bridie's family, her son Porrick, her daughters Margaret, Sheila, Bridie, Maura, Catherine, Eleanor, Yvonne, Susan and Dorothy her 33 grandchildren and 26 great-grandchildren, her daughter-in-law and sons-in-law, nieces, nephews, relatives, neighbours and friends gathered here in St Oliver Plunkett's Church and also watching online this morning. And we also remember Bridie's husband Paddy and her daughter Anne and parents Patrick and Susan and her brothers and sisters and relatives gone before her marked with the sign of fate. May they all be reunited with God in his eternal kingdom of heaven. So now we commend Bridie's soul to God as we pray uh, for her and for you, uh, her family, relatives and friends gathered here this morning. So both the Bible and the crucifix now are placed on Bridie's coffin in baptism. Bridie received the sign of the cross. May she now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. And in life, Bridie cherished the gospel of Christ. May Christ now greet her with these words of eternal life. Come blessed of my father. <clears throat> You, Bridie's family and friends, now are uh, grieved with a great loss, and we all feel a sense of your loss. 
and we support you now with our prayers and sorrow, so we turn to God, who is the shepherd and guardian of our souls. And so, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate now the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask that the Baptist Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Christ, have mercy. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who are mercy for sinners and the happiness of your saints, give us, we pray, to your servant Bridey, for whom we perform the fraternal offices of burial, a share with your chosen ones in the blessedness you give that, so that on the day of resurrection, freed from the bonds of mortality, she may come before your face. We make our prayer to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. So I invite um, Yvonne and Catherine is going to come up now for the first and second readings, please. Thank you. First reading, a reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to root up what is planted. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to discard, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. God has made everything suitable for its time. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. If God is for us, who can be against us? Since God did not spare his own son, but gave him up to benefit us all, we may be certain, after such a gift, that he will not refuse anything he can give. Could anyone accuse those that God has chosen? When God acquits, could anyone condemn? Could Christ Jesus? No. He not only died for us, he rose from the dead, and there at God's right hand he stands and pleads for us. 
What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, not anything that exists, nor anything still to come, nor power, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God made visible in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I'm going now to prepare a place for you. And after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. So maybe seated, please. So on behalf of myself, Father Noel, and the priests and staff of St. Mary's Parish here, I extend our deepest sympathy to you, Bridie's family, as we gather for her funeral mass. Bridie's funeral mass primarily worships God, our creator, our redeemer, and our saviour. And it also commends her soul to God, asking God to bring her into his eternal kingdom forever. And it also prays for you, uh, Bridie's family, relatives, and friends, helping you through this sad time when you bid her farewell from this life, but also in the hope to meet her again in the eternal life of heaven, please God. Bridie was born on the 5th of September in 1921, celebrating her 101st birthday just there on Monday last. She was born to Patrick and Susan Lynch in Carrig a Bruise in Virginia in Cavan. She was the second youngest daughter of 10 children, and she went to Carrick Bruce National School and then to the Tech in Kells for her education. One cousin in each family was invited to weddings back then, so all families would be included at the weddings. And Bridie was chosen to go to her cousin Kathleen Lynch's wedding in 1941, and Kathleen worked also in Healy's Drapers in Virginia with uh, Paddy Brennan, and so Paddy was also invited to Kathleen's wedding. And I'm told it was love at first sight for Bridie and Paddy when they met at this wedding. Bridie knew Paddy was hers, and as the saying goes, a wedding makes a wedding. They went out for seven years and were married in 1948. Weddings took place quite early in the mornings back then with a wedding breakfast afterwards. Paddy became a qualified draper and he acquired employment in Navan here. After working for years earning money in the drapery business, he earned enough to purchase his own drapery and furniture shop. He worked in the shop helping him and Paddy would put his hand to anything his family told me. they had 10 girls and one boy, and we commend Bridie and Paddy for bringing up 11 children, especially when the income depended on their work and sales back then. Bridie loved to cook and clean and to look after her children and see that they were always cared for. She knitted and sewed clothes for them as, as they grew, and she was content with her families when her family's needs were met and didn't long for anything more. She regularly said to be happy with your loss and to always give God thanks for everything and everyone we have. The house would be a meeting point for all the family, especially at Christmas time when the house would be jam-packed, I'm told. 
had he died in 1982, which was, of course, a big heartbreak for Bridie to lose the closest person for, uh, to her. She said Paddy died too young, but her family said she kept strong after he died. Her great fate would have very much helped her when after Paddy's death. She was very much a homebird person, but she did travel to Lourdes a few times, and she travelled regularly to Knock. She enjoyed doing crosswords in her later life and to play cards at home with her family. She would come to the 7 p.m. Vigil Mass here, or the 12 noon Sunday Mass in St. Oliver's Church, and she was one of the first people to volunteer to do the Eucharistic Holy Hour when it began in our parish year, committing herself to this hour on Wednesday nights for over 25 years. Her favourite saint, as we see brought up here, was Saint Therese of Lisieux from France. And on Bridie's 90th birthday at the Mass for her in St Anne's Chapel, she got up and read the prayer to St Therese, which will be uh, read again at the end of this Mass. There were great celebrations when Bridie reached 100 years old, but she wasn't fond of the limelight, I'm told, or for anyone to make a fuss about her. And even up to a few weeks ago, she was still coming here to Mass in St Oliver's Church. Her health deteriorated about six weeks ago, and even when she became housebound and eventually bedbound, she was still asking her family, are you bringing me to Mass today? Her family were wondering, would she make her 101st birthday last Monday? And she did. And two days later, Bridie died on Wednesday last. May she rest in God's peace in heaven after a long life well lived. I got to give Bridie Holy Communion just there on Friday last, or what is otherwise known for someone who is dying as viaticum, which means food for the journey, the journey being from this life, of course, to heaven. In the year 1950, Paddy and Bridie received the Jubilee Papal Blessing for themselves and their family as a wedding present. They had this blessing hung up in their home ever since, and on this blessing it states that an apostolic benediction and a plenary indulgence is to be gained at the hour of death for the named uh, who receives viaticum before they die. When Father Declan seen this, he was sent to me amazingly after 72 years when this blessing was issued. The promise came to be last Friday when Bridie received viaticum after all those years. In the 1800s here in Ireland, food was uh, not as plentiful and people depended very much on the land and the weather for food each year. Archdeacon Kavna was the parish priest of Knock in County Mayo in 1879 and he knew about the risks of food shortages and famine in Ireland at the time. So he decided to offer up 100 masses for the holy souls to implore God's help that famine would not come. And after he'd offer up the 100 masses for this intention, the magnificent vision in Knock appeared on the 21st of August in 1879 at 8 p.m. in the evening. The Lamb of God appeared on the altar with a cross behind it and angels hovering around it. And to, this, to the left of this apparition, Mary appeared with St. Joseph to her left and, and St. John the Van Evangelist to her right. The apparition lasted for about two hours in pouring rain, and many parishioners witnessed the apparition. Even those living far away from Knock witnessed the light, thinking it must be a fire to cause such a great light back then. The apparition in Knock shows us that God is always with us, even in the hardest times in our lives, like when the famine threatened the people of Ireland. And as God was with the people of Knock back then, God is with you too, uh, Bridie's family, to help you through this sad time. The apparition of Knock shows us that life is not the end here, but the beginning of life eternal. When we place our trust in God, like the people did in Knock, God will always be there for us. And this was very much Bridie. Her devout faith and trust in God, coming to Mass here, receiving the sacraments, praying at home and with her family and in Eucharistic adoration, and her devotion to St. Therese and all the saints, and her life well lived ensured her closeness to God all her life. Jesus tells us in the Gospel, I'm going now to prepare a place for you, and after I have gone to prepare you a place, I will come and take you with me so that where I am, you may be too. 
Ms Bridie helped Paddy prepare many homes with their uh, furniture shop. We pray that Bridie will now enter into her eternal home, prepared for her in heaven, with Paddy and all of her family gone before her, marked with the sign of faith. Eternal rest grant unto Bridie, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. And may she rest in peace. Amen. And may her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. <clears throat> So I'll ask you to please stand for the prayers of the faithful. So, Breeding, Owen, Sean, Aidan, Karen, Claire, Seamus, Ellen, and Sarah will come forward now, please, for the prayers of the faithful. So, brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and he sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join now our prayers to his. Today, a day of sadness is also a celebration of Bridget's long and dutiful life. We give thanks for the blessings bestowed upon her over the many years, a strong and steadfast faith, a loving home, a devoted family, and many years of good health. Lord, hear our prayer. Look, no, you officially hear us. We pray for the family and friends of Bridget, may the Lord Jesus, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus, heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray in thanksgiving for our neighbours and friends who have been so kind to us during this time of sadness. May God reward their kindness and bless their homes. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, graciously hear us. We give thanks for the love which Bridget showed during her life. May she know the perfection and fulfilment that love in heaven as she experiences the mercy of God. May she continue to inspire us, to intercede for us, and be there at the end to welcome us into eternal life. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, graciously hear us. As we pray that Bridget will find eternal peace, we pray that the peace that is in heaven will touch the troubled parts of our world, our country, our parish, our homes, and our hearts. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our young people, especially those in our family. May they always value the goodness, kindness and friendship inspired by their Nana. May they come to know the beauty of the gift of human life. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for this community assembled here to pray for Bridget. May God deepen our faith and strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of coming of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all of those who are ill at this time. May God lay his healing hand on them and give them courage and hope. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who have died, remembering especially Bridget's husband, Patty, and her daughter, Anne, all her relatives and friends who have departed from this life. Marked at the sign of the cross, may God unite them all in the happiness and peace of his heavenly home. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, graciously hear us. Okay, thank you. So, Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in your kingdom. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So, Dorothy and Maura now will bring forward, please, the gifts of bread and wine. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. 
And pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> be near, O Lord, we pray to your servant, Bridie, on whose funeral day we offer you this sacrifice of conciliation, so that should any stain of sin have clung to her, or any human fault have affected her, it may, by your loving gift, be forgiven and wiped away through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In, hope, in him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing him of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. <clears throat> Do this in memory of me. <coughs> The mystery of faith. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead and he is Lord. Every For as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Tom, our Bishop, and all the clergy and all your people. Remember your servant, Bridey, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a debt like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. <clears throat> Remember also our brothers and sisters 
who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Therese and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you th through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. And at the Saviour's command and for by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. <clears throat> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. If there's one more minister of Holy Communion, can you come forward, please? Thank you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. We await a saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our mortal bodies uh, to conform with his glorified body.
O Sacrament, most holy, O Sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O Sacrament, most holy, O Sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O Sacrament, most holy, O Sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. So I invite Declan forward now for the uh, communion reflection, which is the prayer to St. Trace that uh, Bridie prayed on her 90th birthday and uh, the saint that whom uh, Bridie had such great devotion to. Oh dear St. Trace, deign from your home on high to scatter your roses over me and bless me ere I die. Help me with pain and sorrow to see, as you only can, that pain and sorrow are equal parts of God's eternal plan. To detach my heart from this world of ours, with confidence look on high, where the loving heart of Jesus waits for the love that can never die. Ask Mary, my own dear mother, so tender, so loving and true, to shield me along light's weary ways, Neat the folds of your mantle blue. Thus escorted, O oh dear little flower, neither pain nor danger, I fear and with Jesus, Mary and Joseph, I know you will always be near. Okay, thank you, uh, Declan, and thanks to Padso, Brendan, and Shea for your singing and music here today, and to all who did readings and prayers at uh, Brady's Mass, and to our Eucharistic ministers, our sacristan Stephen, Joe on the webcam, and to Farrelly's uh, undertakers as well, and to all volunteers and all who helped out at uh, Brady's Funeral Mass here uh, today. And so let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that your servant, Bridie, who has journeyed from this world, may by this sacrifice be cleansed and freed from sin, and so receive the everlasting joys of the resurrection. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And let us bless the Lord. So, trusting God, we have prayed together now for Bridie, and we come to the last farewell. There is sadness now in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Bridie again and enjoy her friendship. Although we will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joys of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another now in the faith of Jesus Christ. So now I'll sprinkle uh, Bridie's coffin with holy water, remembering when she was baptised into Christ. And then afterwards I'll incense her uh, coffin with the turbul here, which symbolises our bodies, our temples of the Holy Spirit. And so they are sacred to God.
and your responses receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to her aid, hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. May Jesus Christ, who called you, take you to himself, and may angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto Bridie, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. Receive her soul and express her God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend now our sister Bridie in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed on Bridie in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with our sister forever. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So Bridie will be laid to rest in St. Mary's Cemetery. So um, the family have wished that um, the condolences be taken place in the church here. So if you can come forward to this, through the centre aisle here and exit uh, through this door, please. Thank you. Thank you. And just one more thing, just no, uh, just say, shaking hands at the moment in the church. So if you can please also remain, uh, refrain from shaking hands. Thank you.